Hi guys! Today we will show you a portable laser engraver for your home or office. It's the K8 from Wayne Looks. This model is available with three different laser power outputs to choose from. We will test the most powerful of the three, which is equipped with a 10 watt laser head. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. Wayne Lux is a company specialized in laser engraving machines. They have several different machines and in this video we will test one of the K-series. The K-series has three different models. The K8, the K6 and the K10. The one we have is the most complete of the series, the K8. This model is available with three different laser heads. A 2.5 watts, a 5 watts and a 10 watts. The one we will be testing in this video is the one with the 10 watt laser head. The main features of the K8 laser engraver are the following. It's a fully enclosed laser engraver in a small size which is perfect to have on the desk. It's FDA certified and it's equipped with several safety features as we will show in the video. It's equipped with a fumes extracting fan and we can attach an air purifier to it. It has an internal light and a 2 megapixel camera and also a roller unit can be connected to it. Ok, let's start with the unboxing. The engraver comes nicely packed inside a couple of cardboard boxes. Inside the box and right at the top we have the user manual. Next we have a bag with several samples of different materials, such as vinyl, scratch paper, wood, metal cards, cardboard and leather. And finally we have the engraver. Inside there are a couple of boxes and one of them is the power supply. The power supply is this brick type with an output of 12 volts and 5 amps. Inside the second box we have the USB cable, a small brush, a marker, a spare lens, a couple of metal tag samples and a square tool. And this is everything that came inside the package. Wayne Lux also has the air purifier unit. This unit will help to extract and absorb the smoke and smell from the engraver. Inside the box there is a user manual at the top. Then there is a hose, the power supply and the unit itself. The power supply is this one with an output of 12 volts and 2 amps. And this is everything that came inside the package. This is the laser engraver. As we mentioned is a fully enclosed machine and can easily fit on any desk since it measures only 270 by 270 mm and 295 mm in height. At the front is one of the two access doors and under it is a dust tray. At the corner is the on and off switch, indicator light and repeat button. At the side is the knob to raise or lower the engraving bed and an opening for an air purifier. At the back is the second access door and at the other corner is the USB Type-C connector and the power connector. At the front we have the access to the dust tray and to remove it we just need to pull it out. Hidden inside is a USB connector. This is where the roller unit needs to be connected if you have one. The bed is this cut out metal plate which is nice for cutting. The workable area is 130 by 130 and the Z adjustment can reach up to 100 millimeters. 
There is, however, a 3 kg weight limit that you can load on the engraving platform. At the top is a light strip to illuminate the working area. On the laser is a probe to adjust the laser focus distance. The X and Y axis move on small wheels. At the very top is a 2 megapixel camera pointing directly down. The Z moves on linear rods and the height of the bed is adjusted with the knob at the side. Also on that side is the fan that pulls out the air. This fan can be easily removed for cleaning purposes. Around the fan there are cutouts that are used to secure a hose for an external air purifier as we will show in a few minutes. At the back and hidden inside is a memory card slot if we want to load the files from the micro SD card. The manufacturer states that this engraver received a class 1 level because it's all enclosed and the windows have a laser filter. Furthermore, the doors are equipped with safety interlocks which keep the laser from turning on and the axis from moving if the doors are open. The outside indicator light will blink, stating that the safety is activated, which means the laser is off and will not turn on. After closing the doors, the light will stay solid. This solid white light changes to blue whenever the laser is turned on. If we want to engrave a long piece that does not fit inside the engraver, we can bypass the safety interlock of the doors and work with the laser with the doors open. To bypass the interlock, we need to keep the repeat button pressed for a few seconds. And this way, the white light will stay solid even if we open the door and the laser can be used. Once we close the door, the bypass will reset and be active again. The 2 megapixel camera located inside is directly connected to an ESP module. This module is also responsible for sending the camera images remotely through Wi-Fi. Ok, let's disconnect the camera and remove the top cover, so we can access the X and Y axis and also the laser. While checking all the mechanics, we noticed that the axes were a bit loose and this needs to be fixed. To fix this, we need to adjust the eccentric nuts located on each axis. By turning these eccentric nuts, the wheel's grip will increase or decrease. We need to turn them so that the grip gets tighter and the axis stop wobbling. If you want to know more about how this works and how to correctly adjust the eccentric nuts, please check our other video about this topic. Regarding the air purifier, we have the MD22 Mini also from Wayne Lux. This unit is plug and play for the K8 engraver. The hose connects to the unit on one side and to the engraver on the other end. The unit has two buttons, one to turn the unit on and off and the other to change the speed. There are three speeds in total. The filter is easy to reach. We just need to release the two side locks, remove the top cover and pull the filter out. Spare filters are available on the manufacturer's website. The software that Wayne Lux recommends using is CutLab X. CutLab X is free to use. You just need to download the software for a computer or smartphone on their web page. When opening CutLab X, we click on Start Creation and then connect the engraver. It's possible to connect through USB or Wi-Fi. To do that, we select the way we want to connect here. To get the camera image, we click on the camera icon at the top. The camera can be used to help with the alignment of the designs on the parts. So, we load the file we want to engrave or cut and then we align the design on the material using the image taken from the camera. Once we have all the settings ready, we can click on Start. Because CutLab X software is more limited when compared with Lightburn, we prefer to use Lightburn instead. However, for Lightburn, it's not as straightforward to set up this engraver's camera. 
We need to create a local web page to capture the camera's image, install additional software to create a virtual camera broadcast, etc. Luckily, there are a few pages online that explain and help to set up the camera. We will leave the link on the description if you want to check. Ok, so let's start testing the engraver. As we mentioned before, we will use the Lightburn software and connect the computer to the engraver with the USB cable option. To adjust the laser height, we first move the laser head over the sample and lower the probe. Then we adjust the height with the knob at the side until the probe tip is touching the sample. Then we lift the probe and that's it. We tested several different materials such as vinyl, leather and felt. One of the things that was included was this L-shaped piece. This is a square tool to help align the pieces on the working platform. We also tested with several types of wood and with different thicknesses. We also engraved on this brush and we tested cutting a 10 mm thick wood. We also tested engraving on metal pieces and also on thin metal cards. And finally, tested with cork and also engraving on stone. And here are the results of all the tests we have done. This is the test with the vinyl. For this one, we only tested cutting and it was done without any issues. This is the test with the leather. No issues whatsoever. The engraving is well defined and the cut was done without any effort. Cutting felt is just a matter of getting the laser power and speed just right, so that it can cut the material without melting the surroundings of the cutting path. For balsa wood, we did several tests. We tested cutting a 1.7 mm thick balsa wood and it turned out ok, except for some burn marks on the back side. The cause of the burn marks was due to the cutouts on the working platform that are too spaced out. We then cut a few squares of 10 mm wood and used them to raise another 1.7 mm board. We then cut the board while raised and that helped prevent the burn marks on the back side. We also engraved and cut a 5 mm thick balsa wood and this is how it turned out. The details on this one look amazing. We also engraved and cut on the 10 mm thick board and it turned out ok. It took a few passes to cut all the way through, but it got the job done. The brush was engraved with our name on it and it looks great. The 10 watt laser head was also able to engrave this metal piece nicely. This is the metal card. Engraving this card was not that hard as well and it turned out very good. Engraving on cork was not hard. We just had to dial in the settings so it would engrave just the right amount. This is the test done with stone. This one was easy to set up since the stone allows a wide range of laser power. The result, as you can see, is awesome. Ok, and now for all the pros and cons. And for the positive side we have. It's an engraver with a compact size and light weight, which can be placed on any desk. However, this means that it has a limitation on the engraving area, which is only 130 mm by 130 mm. It's ready to work out of the box, and the provided software is easy to work with and great for beginners. It's fully enclosed, and thanks to the two doors, it's easy to access its interior. It's possible to attach an air purifier to it, all the safety features that this engraver has are also a plus. You can choose between three different laser heads, 2.5 watts, 5 watts or 10 watts. It can engrave and cut a wide range of materials, including cutting wood with a thickness of 10 mm. The Z-axis has a big travel, which is great if we want to engrave tall materials. 
It's equipped with an internal light and camera, which allows to see the carving progress in real time on the mobile app. The downside of the camera is that it's not easy to set up on Lightburn if you want to use it. It can be connected by USB or Wi-Fi and allows working offline if we load a micro SD card with the G-code on it. It's possible to connect a roller and it's easy to clean thanks to its dust tray. The filters from the air purifier are super easy to replace. However, the price for each filter is too high in our opinion. Also on the negative side we have the working platform cutouts that should be bigger to avoid burning marks when cutting some materials. And the fact that we cannot use any external air assist. So, in conclusion, this is a very nice engraver to have at home or at the office, to cut and engrave small things. The 10 watt laser head is powerful enough to cut through thick wood and engrave metallic materials. The air purifier unit is also a plus to have together with this engraver. Although the air purifier can filter most of the fumes, you will still notice the smell while cutting or engraving. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!